with Tim O'Malley following Brian Kelly's webinar with the media, 30 minute webinar with the media. He touched on a variety of topics, obviously, uh, but th the one that I want to start with, Tim, is him talking about his team and his, his team's attention to detail. And we talk about like from minute to minute, do you feel there's going to be a season or not? But when you hear him talk about his team and he says that his team's attention to detail is absolutely unbelievable, you feel better about Notre Dame's opportunities to answer the call when they get to the gate. You do, and he, he's really been complimentary of the whole time. This is actually a question about um, the challenge of playing football on the field, and he's like, this, that is not our challenge. The challenge is adhering to the rules. They've been absolutely unbelievable was the quote. I thought it was interesting when he said, their human behavior has earned the trust of our university to think we can go on and have this season because I know everybody's dying to hear about Chris Tyree, but without what he said, Notre Dame would not be playing a football season as a member of the ACC as of right now. And, and you just, you don't have the confidence that their opponents or all of their upcoming opponents will have the same discipline that they do. No, I have confidence that maybe Duke and Wake Forest will, but we were looking okay. at the, uh, we were looking at the enrollment of other schools and it, look, it's not, it, it's not the big 10. There's a reason the big 10 would have a, a hard, time honestly than the ACC but you're still hitting 32,000 Florida State 23,000 Virginia Tech 23,000 Syracuse 22,000 Clemson that range um, it's mathematically harder for them but this is the best news we have is how positive Brian Kelly is about how they've approached this so you feel better about being 30 days between uh, between now and the first game it feels like it's already 29 to me yes <laughs> sounds good uh, I, I, there was not a ton of personnel talk, and for some ungodly reason, my questions were were not asked. I, I don't know what the problem there was, but your you actually had the first question. You asked a question about about Nick McLeod, Ben Skoranek, and Isaiah Pryor, uh, the grad transfers, and there was some really, I mean, really positive news there. Nick McLeod's had a little ground to make up because Skoranek and Pryor have been there. Since, since the start of the semester, but some really positive news about, you know, I don't, he talks about points, a thousand points, 1200 points. I don't know exactly how you earn those points, but some positive news about the grad transfers. Yeah, I think uh, the fact that he gave us reference for those points was, was good. He said Ben Skoranek was a leader in points in the off season training. Since they only had one spring practice, this is obviously your tra training and perhaps some off the field things, but uh, Skoranek edged out Kevin Austin as a leader, which I thought was great to hear him volunteer Kevin Austin's name. Um, and he mentioned that Isaiah Pryor was, if, if Skoranek was 1,200 points, Isaiah Pryor was 1,000, which sounds like it's very high as well. So he was really complimentary of them. I, I thought he puffed his chest a little bit with his training program by saying Nick McLeod had some ground to make up coming in because he is from a different program. But he said McLeod got to the 650-point range, and he offered Kyle Hamilton was a leader and Sean Crawford at 750 points. So it seems the training took hold was the word he used for, uh, for McLeod. And then he mentioned that his length just fits in well on the field. Um, it, the best part, he said, is if you take grad transfers, you're not supposed to miss. And he doesn't think these three are going to miss. Yeah, you talk about if you're a grad transfer, you need to be very bright. And, and it, it sounds like those guys are because I mean, you think about it, you think sure. about how long it takes for a freshman to fully understand the system. And these guys are a little bit older and have played college football. So that's to their benefit, but still you come in different system, different terminology. Uh, and it sounds like Skoranek and Pryor are uh, up to speed there. And I really have no doubt that Nick McLeod uh, is up to speed because we've seen film of him. We know, and that's a veteran player too. Uh, I mean, a guy with, but 20 start 30 starts or however many has 30 games played uh, in college football from NC state. So that's real positive. Uh, the typical question about players jumping out uh, at you and it, you know, it's, it's a generic question, but it's certainly one that elicits the kind of, the kind of information that you're looking for. It definitely does. Yeah. And uh, really not surprisingly, Michael Mayer, Chris Tyree at the top of the list among the freshmen. Yeah, I, everybody would have predicted it, but you're still happy to hear it. The best thing he said about Chris Tyree is he is not a specialist. They can bang him in there and play him at running back, and he also qualified it by saying he's not 30 carries, not 30 carry a game guy, 
Nobody is. No, uh, Nobody is maybe, anymore. Maybe Josh Adams against Navy one day was a 30 carry guy, but a 29 carry guy. That's about it. So not surprised to hear those names. Um, it's great that Tyree is clearly in the mix or Brian Kelly would be down playing it right now because he is always aware of the overhyped player. He is not downplaying Tyree. He is just talking about him in general terms that he will help the team. And yeah. the third guy, Kevin Bauman, I know our Kevin Sinclair is not surprised by that. I texted him immediately. I said, Kevin, Kevin Bauman was brought up as a guy Brian Kelly said we won't be able to keep up off the field. And I do want to caution everybody. People are wondering, well, does that mean Tackus will never play again and Brock Wright's not going to play? He means he is going to be a special teams player that can contribute from scrimmage. I know I speak Brian Kelly fluently. And that's what Brian Kelly meant. Um, I wrote a story about Bauman, put it back up on the board. You like Bauman to read it. He uh, talked to him right before he enrolled in June. And he really had his eye on getting on the field because he's physical and can tackle. And some of the comments about Michael Mayer. I mean, well, first of all, Bauman, he said, if Michael Mayer wasn't in this class, right, there right. would have been a lot more talk about Kevin Bauman. And, and, and that's good to hear. But in terms of, of Michael Mayer, some of the things that he said, innate ability, size, quickness, escapability. I love Michael Mayer as a defensive end, too. Uh, tight end is the right position for him to play. But all of those things come into play. And so we're going to see Michael Mayer. They're not going to redshirt him. They're not – provided they stay healthy, of course. Yeah. Uh, Chris Tyree, they're not going to redshirt him. And Kevin Ballman, uh, it makes – he makes it sound like it's going to be very, very difficult not to use a year eligibility, and, that, and that's fine. I mean, you need players, you need good freshman players, and in addition to those three, he also talked about some, some young guys on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, he was a little generic, but he said the, the corners, the freshman corners look really good, which is great because you go into this with three guys that can start and play, and Bracey Crawford and McLeod, they're going to find a fourth out of Rutherford, who you've heard great things about, K.J. Wallace, who I stubbornly like for his scrappy attitude, and then Cam Hart, who was kind of – looked like he had emerged <laughs> going into that one single spring practice. We don't want to put too much on that. But they're going to find one guy out of that, I'm confident. And then you're talking about the future for the three corners, that they look really good. Yeah, and he didn't – when you say generic, he did not name the freshman corners right, right. by name. But we're, of course, talking about Caleb Offord and Clarence Lewis, who we've good, heard good things about, and Ramon Henderson. I want to throw this in because I didn't mention it in our podcast earlier in the day, and Brian Kelly didn't bring it up. I, Jay Brunel, mark my words, Jay Brunel is going to be a guy that has a chance to make an impact this year. That kid off the snap of the football, you better be ready to defend him off the snap of the football. And I, I'm not saying Jordan Johnson isn't going to make an impact right. or Xavier Watts, but I think Jay Brunel will too, because his, his quickness and just pushing off the line of scrimmage, people are going to have to take note. Um, I want to give you a little credit for this because we only put him on the back burner when he hurt his shoulder. We just thought, well, there goes that. You know, if you hurt your shoulders in early enrollee, that, that mitigates your advantage of being an early enrollee. But you say off the ball quickness. Off the ball quickness comes into play on three special teams as well. So Jay Brunel, it, it, that's true. where you get the trust is where you get that trust. Then you work your way into the lineup. So that's a good call by you that is now um, reinvigorated, I guess, resurfacing because uh, he's a healthy player. Yeah, kick. Yeah, kickoff coverage. I mean, the guy that can get downfield uh, quickly. He is that guy. Last thing I I, I want to address, Tim, is that um, day three. Brian Kelly talked about day three, which will be tomorrow. They will be in full pads, and he talked about, you know, they got to ramp it up. They haven't ramped. They haven't ramped it up since preparation for Iowa State down in Orlando. So there's an adjustment there. There are some issues because of the pandemic. You know, he talks about, and these sound like minor things, but when you're a head coach, you got you have to consider all these things. 50% locker room capacity. They have to build in some extra time just getting ready for the day and ending the day because not everybody can be in a locker room at the same time. Everything's a headache, uh, and he is going to have to handle it and, and make it so it's not a headache for his players. I thought the, the rundown of practice, someone did ask how challenging practice is, they have individual water bottles in certain kiosks. Now, you would think, as Jack Freeman said before we recorded this, that would increase your water intake. Apparently, it does not. 
because 15 to 17 players lost 3% of their body weight. And it's normally, what do you say, three to four or three to five players? Well, yeah, because you have student managers that are handing you bottles all the yeah. time. If you yeah. have your own individual bottle, yeah, you, you, like you don't make time to go over after a rep and get your right. own individual bottle. And as he noted, yeah, losing 3% of your body weight for practice isn't a big deal unless you keep doing it and keep doing it and 15 to 17 players keep doing it. And then all of a sudden you have a little bit of an issue with trying to train. There's a reason he loves guys with work volume. It's been his word for 11 years. That's why Chip Long and Brian Kelly and Lance Taylor love Jafar Armstrong. The guy can go forever. If you can't go forever, you can't win a job. So I, if people kind of, you know, think we need to downplay losing 3% of your body weight, it's a continuous problem. Um, and then spraying the balls off. I, I should have known that. I, you, you have to spray the football on almost every throw, which, of course, they have a lot of footballs. We're not dealing with one football out there in the quad, but you have to spray the football down and clean them off every throw. It's just a lot more stuff than I think anybody has considered, and that is why every school is not going to do a good job doing this. Last thing I want, I want to include, he was asked about Hainsey and Eichenberg and their leadership, and it, 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 goes without, it goes without saying, but the comment that he did, did make that I think was pertinent was the coach sleeps a little bit better, rests a little bit more easily when you know that you have those two veterans at offensive tackle, which protects the edge. And uh, Ian Book, of course, Ian Book was asked yeah. about his leadership as always, and he pretty much promised that you were going to see the best of Ian Book. I, I still think Liam Meikenberg is added as a captain. I think it's been coming. I know we have slightly different viewpoints on who's going to be added, except everybody in the free world agrees Dale and Hayes will be added as a captain. Um, I think Eikenberg is one of the best players, and I think he's grown enough into the role where Brian Kelly can go to his old standby of, it's nice when your captains are also your best players. This has been Irish Illustrated's Instant Analysis. 